And God blessed them and, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heaven and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them from, for food. And to every beast of the earth and every bird of the heavens and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. And God saw everything he had made. And behold, it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning the sixth day. Thus, the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God finished his work that he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and made it holy. Because on it, God rested from all his work that he had done in creation. And I like that too, you know. Um, one of the, I, I did a lot of counseling work with people who were, coaching work, I guess, with people who were fairly spectacularly successful. And they were usually workaholics, you know. They're the sort of people that were like, they'd work 80 hours a week, just nonstop. That's just what they were like. And one of the things we were always trying to figure out was, well, how much should you work? Because one answer is you just work till you die, right? I mean, you just exhaust yourself. And, well, that's not, that's not a good idea. And, and then you have to figure out why that isn't a good idea. It's got to be something like this, is that you don't want to do so much work that the amount of work you do interferes with the amount of work that you could still do, right? Because if you work like mad for two weeks and then you, you, like, you have to lie in a hospital bed for a month, that obviously isn't very productive. So you have to figure out how much you can work diligently and then how much you have to recuperate so that you can get back up and work again. And, you know, that's people have basically settled on something like this and given it the divine imprimatur. That, that's one way of thinking about it, which is, well, you can toil away for six days and no wonder because you have to work, but you should rest at least one day out of seven because otherwise, well, you don't appreciate life. That might be part of it. And, and plus, I think it's more a matter of iterab iterability you know, because one of the things that defines morality is the capacity to repeat something, right? So if something is properly structured in a moral manner, then you can do it over and over and over again without any degeneration. And so that's kind of like a relationship. If, if your relationship is negotiated, you can continue to negotiate it, and then you can have a relationship that lasts for a long time. You can do it today and next week and next month and next year. You can maintain it across time. And this, I would say, is the wisdom that's been, associated, that's been garnered over God only knows what period of time to say, well, look, I mean, even God needed to take a break and appreciate what was going on. And it's not such a bad thing for people to follow that, that pattern. And that's a good thing for modern people to know because we seem to be, even though, you know, we're very wealthy by historical standards, our capacity to relax isn't exactly what it could be. And I think that's really hard on people. Mm -hmm.